the story that you're about to tell here, I I watched, I don't know, there's videos on this and on YouTube and on, on the internet five, six, seven times and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you tell the story now, but I, I feel blessed that you're actually sitting in front of me today so that I can maybe unpack this because yeah. this was one of the most powerful, this is probably the most powerful story that's appeared on the podcast so far, but you're just, I know you're just about to talk about. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and then maybe I'll have more questions to un yeah, unpack. But this, this was quite unbelievable to me. So I was talking about, I wanted to access a higher power. I wanted to be a vessel for a higher power. I knew the limitations of the physical. I'd, I'd got a good degree of control of the physical and I was dealing with life and death situations, but I knew it was a grain of sand on a thousand beaches. I wanted to understand more. So um, God or the universe placed me in proximity with the person that abused me. So I was in a cafe. I was 16 stone. I was a lump. I, was, I had all my skills. On my physical skills, I looked across and there he was. And I knew immediately, the I was in the environment. The environment says, you want to hire power? You want to, get, you want to go into the Budo? This is a chance. And the environment taught me again. As soon as I looked over at him, all of my physical skills fell away. I wasn't 16 stone. I wasn't a fifth down. I was uh, an 11-year-old boy again. And I knew, I absolutely knew, that the physical... If I was physical with this guy, which I was capable of being, because that was my, that was, uh, you know, that's what I turned to. And that's what I developed. Uh, I knew that I would, even if I killed him, I would, I would, especially if I killed him, I would feed the parasite in me. Yeah. I recognize, as the rabbis say, when you see somebody that's harmed, you run after them and serve them because they have something of yours and you need to get it back. And they've given you something and you need to give them back, that back. So I didn't recognize this consciously. I only recognized that the physical it would only feed what was in me and I needed to get rid of what was in me. But, I, I, but my, my chair was like a dugout. Um, and stepping out of the chair, I felt like I was going over the top. And this few yards between me and him felt like no man's land. Yep. That's how terrifying it was. There's no exaggeration. I was terrified. I was trembling from my toes right to my scalp. And I just thought, well, no one would know if I walked away because nobody really, uh, you know, the story wasn't widely shared. No one knew who the guy was. I could get away with that. But I knew I would know. And I knew that my, my dharma in this life is to confront fear, to dissolve fear, and leave my lessons in the marketplace, as Rumi would say. Leave my less messages in the, in the marketplace for other people that might want to learn. <clears throat> so I did what I always do. I stepped up, I walked across, and I stood in front of him. But I was so emotional. I was shaking, and I was there was rage, there was emotion. I was so angry, but so I could have cried at any minute. And I just said to him, listen, you don't remember me, but <clears throat> when I was a kid, you uh, groomed me and abused me. I said, and you fucked my life. And he went to stand up, and I said, sit down. It was like a, he felt my certainty. Mm -hmm. He sat down. And I said, you, you damaged me when I was a kid. And I said, you need to know that I forgive you. I forgive you. And I said it to him twice because I needed to reiterate it. <clears throat> and I felt all the fear fall away because I looked at him and he was crushed. He was just crushed. As I went to walk away, he stood up and he put his hand down. His fingers were trembling like that. And I didn't realize what was happening at the time. I only knew it was, it was beyond the handshake. It was nothing really to do with the handshake. He wanted me to shake hands and say, you know, I accept your forgiveness or thank you for your forgiveness. Um, but I knew there was something more than that. And I've, it's only in the last year that I've realized what it was. But I shook his hand and that was the moment I separated the bond between me and him. So even though we were separated by 30 years and even though <clears throat> we were separated geographically. He was still feeding off me. Every time he rose in me as an anger, as a fear, as a lust, as a dissonance, he fed off me. And a greater energy than us fed off him and fed off me. He was a victim too. And I knew that by 
loving him, by finding compassion, by recognizing that he he was going to have to pay for what he did. I knew that compassion would be an antivirus. Um, but I recognized many years later that when he when he put his hand out to shake my hand, that was him unconsciously saying, um, "Thank you for letting me go, and I'm going to let you go. I'm going to I'm going to accept this separation, this bond separation." So that I can go off and repent and you can go off and repair. Both of us were doing the same thing. Repentance means to return to the center, means repair. And and repair means repentance. It means to return to the center. But he was able to return to the center <clears throat> if he was brave enough to repent. And I was going to be able to return to the center if I was brave enough to repair and look at this wound. So I walked off. And that was the very, very beginning of my journey into Budo, proper metaphysical power. Of course, nobody understood forgiveness. Nobody understood that we don't have the power to forgive. We only have the power to give it over to reciprocity, to the law of compensation, to God. We don't have the power to um, forgive. That's not a human trait. It's a divine attribute. But we, we are able to draw down compassion which separates the bond, and then wisdom, which enables us to say, well, if I give this over to reciprocity, reciprocity will settle its own accounts. And that's what I did.